Kristen Fedden is a litigation associate attorney for Stradley Ronan. She joins us now from Philadelphia. I hope I got the name of your firm right. Um, uh, yeah. Good great. morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, so these charges against R. Kelly include accusations from four women, three of whom were underage, but he's faced allegations of sexual abuse dating back to the 90s. Does that affect how the prosecution will argue this case? Absolutely. Um, and I apologize. I'm a little under the weather um, from my voice. But absolutely, whenever you're prosecuting, and I was a former prosecutor, um, whenever you're prosecuting decade old allegations, it can be very difficult for the prosecution. But in this case, they have a lot of evidence. Not only do they have multiple victims who were assaulted during that time frame, um, but they also may try to use other pretrial motions so that they can get into other prior bad acts from R. Kelly so that they can further corroborate um, some of the allegations that they've charged him with. So, you know, I think one thing that many people were struck by um, in this interview is just how emotional R. Kelly has been, uh, how vehemently he has denied all of the accusations and said that, you know, his accusers are liars. I'm wondering whether or not you think this interview and the level of emotion that he's displaying will factor in when it comes to trial. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the things that is very interesting is, yes, he's showing a lot of emotion. But I think if you read behind, between the lines on a lot of the things that he said, it kind of pre presents uh, favorably for the prosecution. For example, the jury, if, if this tape is shown, the jury is going to be questioned on or at least um, inquire as to whether or not this is authentic emotion mm. or whether or not this shows his anger, his lack of impulse control. The way that he got up and was over Gail, who was a female, all of his victims are females, that's also going to come into play. It could be used by the prosecution to show how he was able to manipulate these women and put some type of psychological hold on them so that he was able to sexually, then ultimately sexually assault them. Um, the other thing I think that is very interesting is one of the things that he said was um, in talking about Joycelyn and Azriel is that their parents, I think he said something along the lines of, the parents gave them to them as if sold. these women are property. I think he used the word sold, yeah. Yeah, sold, as if these women are property to be given out, as if these women don't have the autonomy to make their own decisions. And I think that's really important too when you think about these women being interviewed and him sneaking into the interview. That can be extremely intimidating for these women. Right. Particularly if they're victims. I exactly. And and as we said before we introduced you, uh, he was not supposed to be in that interview. He'd agreed with our team not be, to not be in that interview. And then he snuck back in. And clearly there's a thinking there that he snuck back in because he wanted to hear what these women were saying um, and perhaps to even intimidate them, as you say. So they say, Jocelyn Savage and Azrael Clary, that they're in this relationship with R. Kelly and that they live with him willingly. As you heard Gail say, the parents never wondered where they were. They knew Knew where they were they just thought exactly. that he had them or was holding them be uh not at their will so what do you make of their public comments um and how they could hurt or hinder uh, r kelly legally well their comments are very interesting um especially when you look at the atmosphere as we kind of just discussed how he snuck in showing that he could have intimidated or coerced these women into saying what they were saying it also shows his lack of ability to follow rules um when he agreed not to come in um, how this can affect the case, it can affect the case in many ways. The defense could look at this and think that it would present favorably to them. They could utilize these women and ask to be asked to call them as character witnesses to show that R. Kelly is a great person or has great character and would never engage in these um, in the conduct that he's accused of engaging in. However, if you look at it from a prosecution lens um, and without kind of repeating some of the things I already said, you can see that what these women are actually saying, you can look at their age. Right. You're talking about a man who's about 49 or 50 plus years old. And you also look at how these women are kind of attacking their parents. But regardless of the parents role, whether they are seeking money or not, the fact that these women are being held, they're not communicating with their parents um, shows some lack of uh, some ability for R. Kelly to control these women and control the um, the reality that they're seeing, whether or not it's that their parents are actually making these messages or if that's the message that R. Kelly wants them to believe. So there's a lot of things that I think is going to be really important for the prosecutor. If these women are used as um, character witnesses, one, it can open the door to a lot of other allegations that are contrary to what Joycelyn and Azrael are saying. And as we know from the news media, these there are countless allegations 
um, as seen on Surviving R. Kelly, the, the documentary, where there are several witnesses who counter what Azrael and Joycelyn are actually saying. Well, you know, we're living in a time when so much of our communication is documented, whether it's text messages or recordings or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if they say their parents tried to shake down R. Kelly, you know, there's a record. There probably. needs to be some proof to back that right. up. Uh, Kristen Fedden, thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks for having me.